Uh, this one comes to us from Jeff Bingham. And Jeff Bingham writes, The pandemic has claimed yet another victim despite being in the recovery phase. It has just been announced that Arclight Cinemas and Pacific Theaters, which combined have over 300 screens between these two, they're owned by the same parent company, are closing down for good. I believe the hope and expectation is that someone else will take the Cinerama Dome since it is a prime theatrical uh, staple in Hollywood, but it's disheartening news to hear nonetheless. I don't live in Hollywood, but I managed to see a movie at the Dome once in a while. Uh, once when I visited it, I sure hope it reopens. Um, there's no other way to... I was... Rob, it was uh, late yesterday afternoon. I had this news fire across my news feed that the Arclight Cinemas, which if you don't live in LA or in the LA or Southern California area, the name Arclight may not mean a lot to you. It is the theater when not going to his own that like Quentin Tarantino goes to. It is the theater that all, all most of the Hollywood people all go to. It is like a staple of Los Angeles, the, ep the epicenter of movie going it is the epicenter within the epicenter. The Arclight Theater is the, it is the the movie theater in Hollywood itself. And then, of course, the iconic imagery of the Cinerama Dome, Rob. I mean, this was highlighted in uh, Quentin Tarantino's latest movie. Yep. In Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, they, the opening of Entourage, the opening credits of Entourage, the opening sequence of Entourage, always focused right in on the Cinerama Dome Theater. And, of course, the attached Arclight Theaters, which is one of the best movie-going experiences in L.A. On top of that, they're also the same company owns the Pacific Theaters. Now, Arclight has several locations. Pacific Theater has a lot of locations. Grand told they have over 300 screens. And, like, if you're a, a, a film journalist, like, you know, I pretend to be, like, 25%, like, one out of every four press screenings were held at the Pacific Grove. The Grove Pacific Theater. That's where like one out of every four press screenings I've ever been to has been there. About one out of every, maybe like 40% of all the press screenings I've ever gone to have been at this movie theater, at the Arclight Cinemas. Like a good 70% of all of the press, of the press screening theaters are now gone. There's 300 screens. And Rob, it when the news, you know, you and I got on the phone as soon as the news broke and you and I talked about this. It, it shocked me. Now, it wouldn't have shocked me if three months ago this news came out. If this news came out three months ago, I wouldn't have been shocked. But now, as we seem, as the, the person who sent the question is suggesting, we are in this recovery phase, Godzilla versus Kong, but those theaters, the Arclights and the Pacific theaters, never reopened. Anyway, this comes to us from the folks over at The Hollywood Reporter who write, uh, this was not the outcome anybody wanted. This is, of course, from somebody at the company. This was not the outcome anybody wanted, but despite a huge effort that exhausted all potential options, the company does not have a viable way forward, said the statement issued by Pacific Theaters, which is owned by Decurion Corporation, which also owns Arclight. No Arclight or Pacific location has reopened since the pandemic began. On Monday afternoon, word quickly spread across Hollywood that they will remain dark for good and according to the stories beyond just that it says they've already turned in the keys to the landlords of all the theaters they've already terminated their leases they've handed in their keys that these things have now gone dark i guess the amount of debt they've accumulated uh they just ran out of options and even though they're right at the precipice of things restarting it was just too late it was too far gone uh and there was nothing else that they could do Again, it is difficult for people who don't live in L.A. to understand the cultural significance of the closing of not just the Arclight, but also of Pacific theaters as well. This is huge. This is absolutely huge. And Rob, it brings into question, here we are at the beginning of the recovery, and this is when they shut down. Are other theaters maybe in more precarious positions than we may now think? As we think we see stock prices rising, for AMC, Regal, so we see all these stock prices rising. People are coming back to theaters, but maybe they were already past the point of no return, and maybe it's just inevitable that they closed down too. Rob, 
I know you were almost in tears over this. This Arclight Theater is your favorite place to go see movies. Uh, your It is now the latest victim of the pandemic. Your thoughts on the closing of Arclight and Pacific Theaters. How do you see this? Well, I honestly, I'm stunned. I mean, I uh, my uncle used to be president of Pacific Theaters. He's retired now, but the I, I can't believe that this has happened because not only what people don't understand is Pacific theaters and the arc light, uh, uh, the Pacific theaters are in major, our major outdoor mall complexes here, the Americana, the Grove. And these are some of the most heavily trafficked, busy places in LA, the Cinerama theater, which is my favorite theater. I grew up, there's a Cinerama in Seattle that Paul Allen bought and refurbished that has been closed for the last year and it's being closed for the foreseeable future. So I've literally grown up going to the Cinerama and moving to LA. My favorite place to go see movies was always the Cinerama in 2015. It has a giant curved screen. They added laser projection right before the force awakens was showing there because, because the curved screen, sometimes light from one side of the screen would, would shine out over the rest of the screen. So Sometimes it wasn't as bright. They fixed that with the laser projection. Uh, going in there, being under the this geodesic dome, and it, it, to me it was it was a holy place. And then the rest of the Arclight Theater chain, especially there in Hollywood, had great projection, great food. There was a great restaurant and bar there. I mean, I can't tell you. I've seen hundreds of movies there since I've lived in Los Angeles. I. I met Martin Landau once. I had a long conversation with him after we had both seen Apocalypse Now at a 70 millimeter screening in the dome. I mean, I have so many memories of running into filmmakers and conversations I've had there. And, you know, I would go see virtually every major tent pole that got released. They always had preview screenings on Thursday nights, like at seven o'clock or eight o'clock. We'd go there and get dinner and drinks and then we'd go see the movie. And I, I just I can't believe this has happened. And especially to a, it is our, it's obviously the Arclight costs a little bit more. I'm an Arclight member. Um, I, I, I just can't, I, I mean, I understand the pandemic. They haven't been able to make money and they have a huge overhead. I get it. It's academic, but I'm really surprised that it was allowed to go this far. I mean, these are, what about the real estate companies that own the Grove and the Americana? And, and I just, I can't believe that they would have allowed this to happen because especially in Hollywood, other than the Chinese, this was a huge vibrant retail area right by Cahuenga. There's, there's new housing that's gone in there. I mean, this anchored so many other businesses in the area. I just, I can't believe it. I can't believe it, John. I'm, I'm depressed. And also, we have an arc light 10 minutes away from here. I can walk there in Pasadena here. That's also shut down. So the two major theaters that I frequented in the city are gone. Like, gone. Where am I going to? Honestly, there's other places to go see movies where the Burbank 16, but, you know, it's not the same. Yeah. And, and look, there's, there's a little bit of a misconception going around, too. Like, some people are misunderstanding the situation and they're saying things like, oh, you know, you're going into bankruptcy doesn't necessarily mean the end. That's true. Um, Alamo Draft House has gone into bankruptcy, but they're not going anywhere. They've gone into and they filed for bankruptcy protection so they can reorganize their debt, get things settled, and they're going to continue on doing business. This is not the company declaring bankruptcy. This is them saying we are closed. We're, we're out. We've shut the doors. We're done. We're out. This is not bankruptcy. This is them saying we are shutting our business down. And those are two different things. Now, the other thing to keep in mind here is this, is that there is some feeling amongst people that this is some kind of the whole idea that they've already turned in their keys to their landlords and stuff like that, that this is a power move to try to negotiate better terms to keep them around. I don't think that's true. I don't think you announce to the world that we have we have shut down business, but that's that's a possibility some people are floating. The other thing is this a lot of these theaters will probably still function as movie theaters. They will probably just be taken over by other chains. 
and there are many chains in just in the Los Angeles area alone and then the greater Los Angeles area that could step in and take over these theaters, whether it's a Cinemark or whether it's a Landmark or whether it's an AMC or whether it's a Regal or whether it's another player. These theaters probably will be taken over. I, I just can't believe Cinerama is not going to be a movie theater anymore. Los An It's a protected Los Angeles Landmark. Somebody will come in and operate it as a theater. I believe that will happen. It's also important to keep something else in mind that these places did not close down because there aren't people going to the movies. Oh no, these places were very profitable. They were always, the, this particular location is one of always in the top 10 busiest movie theaters in North America. This yeah. is a direct result of the pandemic. You know, I've lost count how many restaurants, some of my favorites, Rob, have been shut down permanently because of the pandemic. It wasn't because people don't go to restaurants anymore. It was because the pandemic came along and killed them. And it's unfortunate, but that's what happened here. And with Godzilla versus Kong closing in on $400 million worldwide, people are still obviously want to go to the movies. So it's just, it's a terrible set of circumstances. Rob, what do you think is the best case scenario here? Like I, I think right now, probably our best case scenario for these locations is that some other chain comes in, takes over the location. So the locations will still be there. But one of the things I love about different movie theater chains is that every movie theater chain you go to is its own different experience. Yes. Like, I love the experience at AMC, but I also love when I get to go to a Regal Theater. It's kind of like a different kind of movie going experience. When I go to one of the landmark theaters that are here in Los Angeles, totally different kind of experience, more intimate and kind of relaxed. Um, when you go to a, and when you would go to Arclight, it, that whole place just felt like an airport. You know, you had the giant time boards, had the restaurants there and yeah. bars there, and then people would go in, wonderful seating arrangement for it, good distance. Like, this was one of the theaters, you guys have to get this. What In any movie theater you go in, the front seat, the front row is the neckbreaker seat, right? Not in the Arclight Cinemas. No. In the Arclight Cinemas, the front row was still like 20 feet from the screen. I mean, every single seat was the best seat in the house. They would start off every presentation. It's a little thing, but I loved it. Before a movie would start, a staff member would come in. Say, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming to the Arclight Theaters. You are about to watch, you know, Groundhog Day with Bill Murray. It was directed by so-and-so. It has a running time of blah, blah, blah. If for whatever reason, they would always say, the sound or picture quality is not up to our high standards. Please come out of the theater and grab one of our staff members and we will correct the problem. Please stay silent. Keep your phones off and enjoy the show. I mean, it's just it's just little things like that that made their experience unique and I really enjoyed. Uh, Rob, what are you going to miss most about like Arclight Theaters and, and Pacific and things like that? Well, for me, the Arclight Cinemas were the professional movie theaters of Los Angeles. It's where all the professionals that work in the business go to see movies because, one, they don't tolerate people talking. They show three trailers and that's it. There's oh, no that's, that's a great one, too. I forgot about that. You're right. They had a rule. Three trailers, no more. None of this 25 minutes of trailer no. bullshit. It was no. three trailers into the movie. I loved that. I mean, it was. it's very much an upscale experience. And because the cost was a little bit more, I mean, not to be elitist, but... You know, no one tolerated people talking or put, putting up their turning, taking their cell phones out. And people who would do those things tended not to go to the Arclight theaters. They would go somewhere else. So there was a there was a sense of decorum that surrounded the Arclight that was and it was it was it was very much an upscale experience and an upscale experience, not to be snooty or elitist, but what it did was serve the movies if you went to an arc light, it meant that you were a real diehard, dedicated film goer that didn't want to put up with any. I mean, you were serious about movies, and that's why, especially the the Hollywood uh, location where the Cinerama Dome was, it really did cater to the film industry. So it, there was frequently you frequently saw stars and filmmakers and. And no one bothered them because that was the environment that they fostered there. And I think, you know, it, it diminishes. And even when you would go to the Pacific theaters at the Americana or at the um, at the Grove, those were also great theaters that offered great sound and projection and big auditoriums. And they cared about the movie theater experience. 
And I think for Los Angeles to lose what I think is their most upscale, sure, AMC did a great job with their Dolby cinemas. But still, the rest of it, it was like you never know if you're going to get a gaggle of teenage girls that were going to be texting a whole during a whole movie. You didn't in the Dolby cinema. But with the Arclight, you knew that you could get great food, you could get drinks. It was very much an adult movie-going experience. And I'm going to miss it. I'm going to miss it too. And again, like I said, we will probably see most of these locations will be taken over by other movie theaters and they will still probably function, but it's just, we lost one of those unique voices in the theater industry that just gave us yet another unique experience. Anyway, question is for you guys. Uh, I also, I'd be interested to know, do you live in the Southern California area or outside? And then what's your perspective on this whole thing? It's a real loss. Like this is 300 screens of that were unique voices in the theatrical exhibition industry. I'm going to miss it. I'll tell you right now, my very first time I ever went to a movie in Los Angeles, when I came to Los Angeles for the first time, it was a special presentation screening in the Cinerama Dome of Tootsie with a Q&A afterwards with Dustin Hoffman, the writer, the director, and the producer. All of them were there to do a Q&A of the movie afterwards. It was one of my favorite things i've ever gone to in a movie theater that was my first experience and now it is gone anyway guys what are your thoughts on this jump into the comment section below and leave your thoughts there okay guys